me? For me, your man, Louis T. Well, for the 2017 NFL Draft Prospects 101 series, your guy to some of the biggest and hottest names. The 2017 NFL Draft, we're talking defensive linemen here, and we're talking about a guy that I like him. I don't love him, which to me sums up the defensive tackle position in this particular draft. Uh, there may be some better value picks later in the draft, but if you're talking about the top end players in this draft, not really worth the bang for the buck if you're asking me. This is another guy that I was really excited to turn on the tape, kind of wowed me at the combine with some athleticism, thought that I would be seeing a guy and, and you know, and watching other players indirectly seeing him, saw him flash a couple of times. So I'm like, man, when I get to this guy, I should be excited. Hmm. I saw flashes, but again, consistency is what I'm after. I didn't quite get that with the next player. I'm talking about Auburn defensive lineman, Montravius Adams. Let's get to Montravius Adams and his pros and why this guy could potentially blossom into a big time player in the league. But I'm gonna tell you right now, after seeing what I saw, highly doubtful. We'll see, let's get to his pros. So when talking Montravius Adams, the first pro is obviously size 6'4", 304 pounds. It's a guy with good size, good length. Um, and I was really surprised because a lot of times the, the taller defensive tackles, you see them stand up straight and you, you see them lose the leverage battle. You can see them getting uprooted by a double team. Not necessarily the case here with Montravius Adams. As a matter of fact, strength is the next pro. Really strong guy when he sets down Anchors down, gets his base correct, comes off the football firing with a low center of gravity, which is the next pro. So I'll lump in strength and plays with great pad level is the next pro. Um, I was surprised because I expected him to be a guy that stood straight up and tried to just be a brute. And uh, he comes off the ball, low pad level, down in his stance, comes up sort of like that sled drill you see guys executing. And uh, he does a really good job of holding his own at the point of attack with a double team, with a guy that's trying to move him out of the way. Does a really good job of really standing his ground and taking on double teams at that. So a uh, really good pad level gives him the strength that he needs to be stout at the point of attack, which is the next pro. Uh, really, really stout at the point of attack. I was impressed with his ability to not be moved off the spot. I watched um, uh, Caleb Brantley uh, just be absolutely uprooted a few times um, in the run game. Uh, sometimes he would run himself out of the play just being over aggressive. And you, you don't see that with Montravius Adams very often. So that's that was definitely a sight for sore eyes after watching some of these guys on tape. Flashes of athleticism. I talked about his performance at the combine and how he wowed me there. Uh, I, I remember he was the first guy to run a 40 and again, with defensive linemen, offensive linemen, the 40 really isn't a great measure of what you're looking for. But still, to see a guy at 304 pounds running a 487, that is just phenomenal for his size. And you see that on tape sometimes, not necessarily the 478. I mean, how often is a defensive lineman running 40 yards? But that initial burst off the line of scrimmage. And, and I will say this, I've been really giving these defensive linemen a hard time. Haven't really been blown away by any of them. Uh, however, I will say that the flash of initial quickness from these guys is pretty much across the board universally. All of these guys get off the snap well, can knife into the backfield and be very disruptive. Montravius Adams is no different. Um, there are times where you see that this guy is an athlete and that he can be more than what uh, some of these other guys are in terms of an athlete and having the ability to maybe get to the quarterback a little bit more, run down a play from the backside, which I don't think is something that you will see him do very often. But I think sometimes you see that flash where you're like, maybe he can. And so uh, th that's also there. 
Um, I talked about the initial burst. That's definitely a pro. One of those guys that tries to get in the back there, which allows him to be disruptive, which is another pro. Uh, I, again, I can respect the guy that's in the backfield being disruptive. Doesn't always make the play, but maybe his disruption uh, sets another guy up, a linebacker or another defensive lineman that can knife in there and get in and make a play because he had to avoid the initial rush of a guy like Montrevious Adams who just knifed into the backfield uh, upon the snap. And now, even though he's been washed out of the play, running back had to jump, jump cut, and boom, here comes another defensive lineman to clean up the running back for a three-yard loss. Uh, Montrevious Adams won't get any of the credit for that uh, on, on, in terms of the stat sheet, but if you're watching the game, you know he had a lot to do with that three-yard loss, and he's one of those types of players. Consistent motor. Even more so than a guy like uh, Caleb Brantley, uh, you get more of a consistent motor out of Montrevious Adams was really impressed with him in terms of running, you know, plays, uh, backside, chasing it, um, hustling, trying to get to the football, trying to be a part of the play. I like that because you just never know. Uh, you just never know when something's going to cut back, backside. And, and if you're hustling, you'll run into something. If the ball is fumbled, you might be the beneficiary of that. Uh, and so I just love to see defensive linemen, just players in general, hustling, trying to get to the football. Has pass rush ability, to me, is the best thing that you get from Montrevious Adams. Uh, I think some people don't think he has the ability. To me, if you want to see Montrevious Adams at his best, watch him versus Georgia. In 2016, that was the best Montrevious Adams that I saw. I even saw a spin move that led to a sack from the big fella in that game. I was thoroughly impressed. Had a sack and a half in that game, as a matter of fact. He was very active. He was in the backfield. He was athletic. He used every single tool he had in the tool belt. And that was the kind of performance that I was looking for. After watching that game, I was spoiled. I said, oh my goodness, I want more. Feed me more, Montrevious. Feed me more. There wasn't any more. I ate all of it up and he had no more to give me after that game. And that was very disappointing, which takes us to our cons. We're gonna talk more about that here in a second. Let's talk about why Montrevious Adams has some things to clean up and why I think just like Caleb Brantley, he's probably gonna be just the guy at the next level. So let's start with that one con uh, I want more he's inconsistent I want more from this guy because I know it's there after seeing it's one thing where you don't show me so I don't know that it's there so I'm not expecting that out of you I, okay you don't have it it's not there you're not capable of doing this I saw Montrevious Adams be a pass rusher. I saw him get into the backfield and be disruptive. I saw him be an impact player against Georgia. I wanted more, I didn't get more, and that was a problem for me because, again, the inconsistency is something I can't deal with. I'm a consistency guy. Give me that same type of effort week in, week out. Don't care who the opponent is, don't care how you're feeling or how the op how good the opposition is, go out and dominate. And I didn't see that enough from Montrevious Adams. We'll stall out too often and much like Caleb Brantley, no counter move. A lot of times when you get him, you got him, good, he's done. He needs to develop. And I saw him spin, so I know it's there, but I don't think mentally he's telling himself, hey, if this initial bull rush doesn't work, Spin, okay, go hard outside, spin back inside and see if I can't hit home with that. I, he just doesn't. And it, maybe it's just not registering for him that I need to come with a secondary rush, with a third rush and, and try to get there. Again, you just wanna give yourself as many cracks and opportunities to get to the quarterback as possible. And with a lot of these guys, there's no secondary rush. If there's a primary rush and if that doesn't work, you got me. And, uh, he will stall out. You know, he'll he'll go with a bull rush, gain no headway, no ground. And, and sometimes I don't think he uses, and again, this guy doesn't know karate. Uh, another one of these guys that has no uh, karate ability whatsoever, not fluent in the verse of hand usage, which is to me key for a defensive lineman. You must 
utilize these things right here. He's another one of those guys that just simply does not do it. And then finally, Pam Mom, okay? Pam Mom, proficient at many, master of none, much like Caleb Brantley for me. He's good at a lot of things, really solid at a lot, but he doesn't stand out in any one area particularly, which is why I feel like this guy just, for me, doesn't move the needle per se. I mean, at least with Malik McDowell, you see, you see extreme athleticism, you see extreme length, you see quickness, you see flashes of some brilliance where you're like, man, this guy has some things you can't teach. That size, that length, that ability to be disruptive in the backfield, it gets you excited. With Jonathan Allen, he's a pass rusher, the best that this draft has to offer from the interior a defensive tackle position. If you want to move him outside, so be it. He can still get to the quarterback. He knows how to use his hands, knows the art of hand fighting and karate. So that's an elite trait. These guys don't offer anything elite. They're just good, solid football players. Are you willing to spend a second round pick on just a good, solid football player? Because I'm not. Because the, the second round pick is the new first round pick. I'm looking for guys that can come in and help me right away. And maybe these guys can help you as a rotational defensive tackle. I don't plan on selecting rotational defensive tackles in the second round. I can do that in the fourth round. I can do that in the fifth round. I don't need to do that in the second round. That's going to do it for Montrevious Adams. And his draft prospects 101 breakdown. If it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here on the Louis T Network. Look, this guy has some talent. I just need to see more. And if I could get more out of him, maybe he, and again, maybe if he gets drafted by the right team, right coach, they may be able to get that out of him. But right now, I'm not sold on what he's selling right now at this particular moment. But in any event, tomorrow, live draft, mock draft, 7 p.m. See you there on this channel. Have a good one. Take care.